All right, hello. Uh, my name's Sam Merritt. I'm the captain and team leader for the Schooner Apollonia, which is the vessel that you're aboard right now. Um, brief overview of the Schooner Apollonia. She was built in 1946. She's a steel hauled gaff rigged schooner, uh, 52 foot on deck, uh, 64 foot sparred length. Um, with a kind of interesting uh, rig on her that I'll give you a quick tour of. But um, before we do a tour of the boat, I just want to let you know a little bit about the purpose because Apollonia is a purpose-driven vessel and the purpose is freight and cargo on the Hudson River. So our, um, our entire uh, mission and the reason we've restored the boat and we started putting her to work is to deliver freight and cargo along the Hudson River. We're currently on the Hudson River. We're actually anchored um, off of Piermont Pier um, about a mile south of the, well, what most people probably know is the Tappan Zee Bridge, but I guess now it's called the Mario something Cuomo Bridge. Um, but yes, and so we are on a freight run, and the whole idea is we are an environmentally driven organization trying to give an alternative method for delivering freight and cargo that is sustainable and that builds connection and community throughout the Hudson Valley. Oh, we have, uh, we have a number of crew aboard, including our, uh, our, our morale officer, that's our chief morale officer, uh, Hoku. Hoku, Hoku, hi. Hoku is, uh, is a sweetheart and, uh, you know, keeps us all in check and it's always good to have someone friendly uh, just in case everyone else is really worn out. But yeah, so, uh, <laughs> one of our guys is laughing at me, but yeah. So that's what we're about, freight and cargo on the Hudson River, schooner Apollonia. Um, let me show you a little bit about our rig and some of the things that make it special and then maybe I'll tell you a little bit about the freight that we carry. Um, but so first of all, if you, uh, maybe let's start at the back, Tanya, and we can work our way up. But um, we, uh, we have a lot of rope strapped blocks on this boat, which is kind of fun. They're all made blocks that we made uh, through workshops with our friends at the Hudson River Maritime Museum. Um, it's been an experience using rope strap blocks. By and large, I'm a huge fan, but they are a little bit bulky, as you can see, and that's something to consider. And, and chafe gear is important. You can see there's not enough chafe gear here. And this poor block is showing the, the price that's on the uh, the old to-do list. So, you know, that's what's going to happen. Um, right here we've got the helm. Uh, pretty standard situation. Uh, you know, this is our helm cushion. Uh, typically the, the box where the actual worm gear lives. Uh, a lot of times this is how we actually steer the vessel. Um, you have pretty good visibility and it's really pretty comfortable right here. If you're in a, a real maneuverable situation where you want to be able to throw the wheel over, um, you'd want to be down here in the cockpit. Um, the cockpit itself, we have whole boat steel, so the cockpit is no exception, which makes it a little bit uh, harder and harsher in some ways, uh, but it's solid. And so yeah, from here you can really throw the wheel over if you need to. You've got excellent visibility right over the top of the house, and you're also kind of protected and out of the weather. So it's a pretty practical scenario. Um, We've got uh, running backstays on this rig. As you can see pretty clearly, the boom extends um, well past where a backstay would attach. And even, even a boom can wouldn't really work because of course we're a gaff rig sail. So we've got these running backstays. Um, this is just a simple takeoff that you can cast off, um, disconnect and reconnect. And of course uh, it gives aft support to our main mast when it's attached. Uh, of course, there are two of them, one on either side, and you've got to tack them, so it makes uh, coming through weather, especially when you're jiving, a little bit interesting. And as you can imagine, there's a block that can be in your face. Um, but yes, so that's that. Um, our spars are actually pretty cool. Maybe I'll jump up and show you the main gaff, because it's the closest, the most available. Uh, but this is a laminate spar. Um, glued up dug fur. We actually got drop from a boatyard up in Albany called Scranos. So these were discards. So it was actually a uh, very inexpensive and we shaped them into, into uh, the spars you see. Um, they're working out pretty well. We have a real simple bridle. We just did it out of Dyneema with Brummel splices. Um, made a little metal traveler so it can travel back and forth with some leather for chafe. Um, and that's how the, the peak block um, for the bridle is attached. Um, there's two bridles, of course, um, both with the same sort of uh, Dyneema leather steel technology um, and just attached with some little seizings. A lot of seizings on this boat. All the blocks are held together with seizings, etc. Um, moving 
moving forward, we've got our sticks. Um, sticks are aluminum. Uh, they're actually built um, and tapered the same way they're called for on the original sail plan, as if they were wooden spars. Um, but the aluminum, of course, is uh, less expensive and uh, it never needs varnish, which, uh, you know, we're trying to find that line between clearly we care about traditional sailing and that's part of the program, but we also uh, have very little budget and um, we're trying to uh, actually think about what a practical working boat would be. And so the few things that we take off, you know, Hudson River sailing is a seasonal affair. And so any wood pieces that are beautiful and bright come off, the, come into the shop over the winter and can be dealt with. Any part of the standing rigging, uh, is sort of built to last, uh, you know, because other than the Coast Guard forcing us for an inspection, we don't want to touch it. Um, sails are all bent on with traditional mast hoops. Um, the whole standing rigging is actually traditional in terms of it's uh, a loft. I don't know if you can see, but there's uh, trestle trees, cross trees, etc. But there's soft eyes, right? So instead of hard, rigid connections, um, the shrouds, which I guess we have to, uh, maybe I'll walk to the four shrouds where you can see. The shrouds, which are just galvy wire, um, and they are, they're served just at the ends, but they're spliced, right? And so on the bottom, it is a hard connection where there's a thin bolt and a splice, and aloft, the there's a big eye that goes all the way around the stick. So very much like you'd see on a traditional wooden boat, and just like you would have sort of hounds um, stuck on the sides, um, we've got uh, cheeks, and our cheeks are just through bolted um, through a tube that's welded in, in the mast. So um, that's the idea. Uh, the gaps have saddles. Um, they're all just homemade steel pieces. Uh, lots of uh, nice coal tar epoxy paint gives it that uh, traditional look and very durable finish. Uh, but yeah, and so we are uh, bald headed, which means we don't have topsails. So we just have our four lowers. This is like a boat that's designed to just be a push and workhorse, and we're. Um, we have to be as maneuverable as possible, and part of maneuverability around here is actually fitting under bridges. <laughs> so height is good, and keeping it around 50 feet gives us a little bit more flexibility than if we were a taller, a taller rig. Um, and of course, having a topsail um, will be cool, but that's a lot of extra stuff to deal with. So yeah. So other than that, I guess we should do a quick uh, let's let's do a quick look down here. So down through the Bomar is the galley. Um, that's Lou. Lou, you want to say hello real quick? <laughs> um, you know, pretty uh, basic primitive accommodation, but works out for us. Um, there's a galley here um, that takes up basically the starboard half of, of this compartment. The port side half has a shop in the front and a head aft of that. Um, then I guess the main event for us is cargo, right? And so this is the cargo hold. We've got these beautiful new covers uh, for, our, uh, for our cargo hold that we have not haven't really uh, gotten to dial in how they're attached. So the nice part is they come off easily. So. There goes uh, the cover. Now we'll swing the floor a little bit. The hatch is a uh, very simple design, but designed so one person can just take it off. The beam comes out. And you can lift off each of the sides. Really pretty light. That's the idea. Now, our cargo hold is, uh, is an interesting affair. I'll hop down in there. So, uh, right now the cargo hold is filled just about to the water line, and we have about 8,000, 8,500 pounds of goods aboard. Um, the goods that we carry um, vary, obviously, but the main cargo we've been carrying is malt which is what you see in all these white 50 pound sacks. So agricultural products from upstate New York that we distribute um, up and down the Hudson River, uh, mostly to distilleries and breweries who are using that grain to make delicious beverages. Um, but we also work with various other shipping partners. This cooler here is full of hot sauce. I can uh, see it's aptly labeled Poor Devil Pepper Company. Um, and here, let's just get one of these bags out to give you a rough idea. So the bulk of our cargo um, is this malt, right? That sort of is the, the backbone of the operation. But we're based on 
the idea of trying to make this a practical model, but also trying to educate people along the way. And part of that is giving them individual goods they can purchase as well. So right here, you've got a cool little baggie that uh, somebody in Brooklyn, I guess I shouldn't tell you their name because maybe that's weird. A friend in Brooklyn purchased and they got all this delicious hot sauce. So this is Cali curry hot sauce. This is all lacto fermented. They've got a smoke shifter, delicious hot sauce. They have what, uh, what is our crew favorite, the evil possessor, very delicious hot sauce. And uh, the point is uh, we are going to deliver it to them in Brooklyn um, in two days. So that's the hot sauce cooler. Um, I'm standing on top of all the malt. Uh, keep this shut. Uh, and uh, there's other cargo aboard, but maybe the other thing I should show you, because it's kind of probably unique to most of the vessels you'll get a tour of, is we've got some interesting bicycle equipment. So, you know, doing freight and cargo in a carbon neutral way, sailing is great, but obviously uh, not everywhere that wants to give us goods or receive goods is on the water. So we use uh, the, the bicycle for the first and last mile logistics. Um, this is a trailer. This is basically the best dock cart you could ever get. Um, and it also turns out um, that it's totally roadworthy and rated for 400 pounds. Um, and it hooks up, I don't know if you can swing the camera to see, but it hooks up to our e-bike, which you can see is currently uh, hooked up to the solar panel. Hopefully still trickle charging, I guess I'll tell you. Yeah, we got uh, one full battery. Ooh, and we're on the last bar on this battery. So we are almost fully topped off. Um, this e-bike um, rig built with that Carla Cargo means we can go up steep hills, we can deliver cargo, um, and we can move about 400 pounds at a time. So uh, we've done two deliveries so far on this run. We left Hudson, which is about 60 miles from here. Uh, we sailed down to Poughkeepsie, delivered 1,200 pounds of malt, three different loads in the trailer, got back underway, sailed down to Newburgh, delivered 2,500 pounds, met up with some other friends there, so the biking was a little bit easier. Um, and yeah, and now we're underway to Brooklyn to unload the rest of the cargo. In Brooklyn, we're actually pretty psyched to work with a horse and a wagon. So that'll be fun. But I know this video is kind of all over the place. Just wanted to give you a rough idea of our operation. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna cut it off now. And thanks a lot. Uh, again, Sam Merritt, Schooner Apollonia, Hudson River, Hudson, New York.